Hello everyone, in this video we're going to go to Villa Hermosa, Mexico and go to Parque La Venta and which is a place that's partially a zoo and it's partially about Olmec monuments so come along for this adventure. Okay, the first thing we get to see here is a sleeping spider monkey. So this place is like a zoo. Oh, he's awake. And then, oh look, there's a, some things are just walking around on the floor there, that's cool. Some of the animals here are just out in the open. And then some of, hello Mr. Monkey. Muy activo es. Hello. Here's a map. This place is pretty big. So it's a kind of a combination between a zoo and monuments together. Um, so we're going to check this place out and see what we can see. Yeah, we got some white tailed deer over here. A lot of them actually. It's like a mini herd of them. Found the way into the archaeological zone now. There's a statue of a guy named Carlos Pelicier Camara. A poet. So what kind of poems did he do? How many poems did he have? Was it all about the Mayans? Okay. Um, here when I saw so let me assume that this is in Tepoztlan, they are around Cuernavaca. Okay. Yeah. We're looking at the first of several Olmec heads here. The Olmecs were an ancient civilization. They were the first civilization here in Mexico. They started in the year 3000 and went until about 1000 years after Christ. We have a large growth ceiba tree. This was the tree that the Mayans used to use to represent the world. And the branches were the heavens, and down in the roots was the underworld. And a fitting, the first one that we get to see here is from 700 years before Christ, and it's the Traveler. And so this shows a guy traveling between cities in the Olmec world. Somewhere between 700 and 400 years before Christ, there was people out there traveling, kind of cool. So the Olmecs, they did not have rocks. This is not a very rocky place. This is a very dirt type place here in Villahermosa. And so they had to import their rocks from the hills. And so this would be a typical boulder that they would transport all the way from the coastal areas over here. So. Kind of crazy, that would have been quite the trip, bringing a boulder like this about 300 to 400 miles away from its origin, so that it could be carved and brought over here and put into a pyramid. This statue here is called the Grandmother, she's also from La Venta, and she's also from 300 to 400 years before Christ. She's on her knees here offering food because that's what grandmothers do is they offer food to people and she has it looks like a she has a tuft of hair but it's actually a headdress on so she was a noble woman i guess grandmothers throughout the world that's what they do they they offer food to people so that's what they're doing this is what the path is looking like my dad really likes this pathway he keeps on taking pictures of the leaves here what are we looking at over here? This is the Stella of the Bearded Man. Looks to me like he has like a helmet, not a beard. Looks like a warrior fighting somebody and he has a he has a helmet on to me. Yeah, they're ant eaters. Yeah. Uh, a whole family of ant eaters here. Just hanging out. 
all over the place. Look at them. They're not behind any. They're looking for those ants. <laughs> I've never seen a wild ant eater before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for them it's a here. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. These are the columns for a tomb here. If we back out, there was a tomb inside. They would have a stone tomb there. Kind of cool. And the dead person would be on a slab inside and the tomb. And this would be Olmec fencing here. If you were an Olmec woman, you would say to your man, one day I want to get married and I want to have my white column stone wall instead of a white picket fence you'd ask for a white column fence with stones that's what it would be like back then if you were an Olmec housewife I guess we have a young warrior from Veracruz right here so this young warrior head here is the example first example of pre-manufacturing so he is a generic warrior head he comes from Veracruz you can still see up at the top that there's um, spike marks where they were cutting and so what they would do is they would make a generic head and then you would go to the stone cutters of Veracruz and say I want my head to be this way and then they would design your head so this is a generic uh, head an old warrior head you can see now this guy he does have any he has earrings there and there's definite markings on his helmet there he would come from Tuxtla Gutierrez this one so just amazing how they get these stones that were like like that's probably like a five ton ton stone there and how they got it all the way over here to the Hermosa area is just mind-boggling just another random ant eater here coming to say hello he's gonna dig up some ants over there and we are in front of an unfinished monument here so again this was an unfinished head you can kind of see where the eyes would be and the nose would be in the mouth but then they would be able to customize it later. So this one was never finished. Over here we have a square altar. On the square altar here you can see an image of a generic person in reverence, bowing down, kind of showing you how you're supposed to be reverent at this altar. Generic, um, they think that the stone was actually carved afterwards, after there was a reoccupation of the Olmecs. So the Olmecs went away, but then the Mayans came forward. And so it's possible that this stone figure is actually a Mayan figure, but on a Olmec stone. So you can see how things were reused. It wasn't always, the stones weren't just always the same. They were often recarved for other purposes in other religions. This is the children's altar. You can see a child there, um, somebody praying for a sick child. And then if we come around here to the side, you'll be able to see different children and how they were cared for. One there is being cared for by their mother. There's a father separating a fight. That's something that we can all relate to, children squabbling. And then we'll come around to the other side here. And then we can see some more scenes. Let's see. Um, there is a father teaching the son some sort of secret and then over here we see a father protecting his son so all scenes of childhood and how the Olmecs would take care of their family because even today family is very important to those people here in Mexico I think all over the world in general but I like this view because it kind of shows you how fathers always have done the same thing throughout time teaching and protecting their children over here we have a picture of the governor so this would be the guy who was in charge of the area of la venta just in case you didn't know him by face there was a statue saying here's the guy that's going to come and collect your taxes so beware of this guy that's that's what that basically says this is kind of an interesting altar here this is a cat altar so you can see some eyes and his mouth and yeah so this 
apparently the Olmecs, they also worshipped cats. Um, kind of interesting to think. Here's a tail back here. I know you can't see it that well. But apparently the Olmec civilization, in addition to many other things, loved having pet cats. And so that's what this is an altar to. You can see some whiskers maybe there. This was dedicated to cats, this altar piece. This monument here has a figure. You can see the, the face here carved into the stone. Very early way of stone carving. And there's two figures on the left and the right of this guy. And they're pointing upwards and it's believed that they are pointing towards an owl. So they call this the owl altar. Oh yeah, and if you look at the top here, you can see how the top of the altar here has feathers. And there's the face of the owl there. So it's like the owl's laying on top of that head there. And you can see feathers up there. So very interesting owl worship altarpiece here. They call this the acrobat because the arms are forward. So this looks like somebody was like standing, well, you yeah walking on their hands but you don't see the rest of the body so interesting this folks is why you do not cross the river here in Mexico any of the rivers there are crocodiles in the river there so definitely don't want to do that crocodiles here in Mexico are actually a protected species you're not allowed to hunt them eat them or make them into boots although there are still boots made out of crocodile. I also see a turtle over there too. Guess the crocodile wasn't hungry. This is an interesting carving. It's a carving of an ancient fish from the Cretaceous period. Not even sure if this type of fish exists anymore but apparently did during the Mayan times. So very interesting. Here is a human-like jaguar. You can see his facial features there. And if you were an unlucky one, you'd be a, well, I don't know if it would be unlucky. It was an altar piece, so you'd put your offering in the middle. So it looked like the jaguar had eaten your offering. This long stone would have been a sharpening stone, so it's basalt rock too. But they would have used it to sharpen their tools with, so that's why you see all the marks on this one. Olmec mosaics. This is the King Stella. He has his royal scepter there in the shape of a vulture and very large headdress. And he would have been the king, one of the kings of La Venta, which is the old Olmec capital. So this stone here is a man carrying a banner and the banner is in the shape of a shark. So he has a shark on a depiction of a shark with full teeth up there. That's what he's holding. And that would have been his banner going into war, I guess. So what did you say about this statue, Dad? It was uh, the announcement for uh, the opening of the movie Joe's. Oh, okay. So when the Mayans would go yes. to the movies, they would know, like, this week, the, the movie of the week was Jaws. Yes, that was okay. the movie of the week. This was the See. movie of the week was Jaws. Yeah. Okay. Promoting the movie. Yeah. The shark still looks fake. <laughs> the Olmecs were into oddities and so you can see this guy was being represented because he had his had a cleft lip there and so oddities in the Mayan world were kind of revered they were considered something special so this is the altar of the dialogue so in this one you would go and you would pray so that you would have good speech and over here you have a hieroglyphic of two people speaking to each other and so this would be like a monument to those who like to talk i think i know a few people like that who like to talk a lot i think one of those people is right over there that likes to talk a lot this is your altar this is the altar to those who like to talk a lot you're gonna say mass on top of that you're gonna say mass on top of this altar yes okay <laughs> There you heard it, folks. <laughs> We're coming to the end of the archaeological part. How did you like it? Wonderful. Especially that uh, save of the air. 
Seba, uh -huh. you like the Seba in the front there the most? Yes. That was your favorite park, the Seba? Yes, it's like a room right on the museum. Okay, there you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this visit to Parque La Venta. I hope you can come out. It costs 55 pesos for our foreigners, 50 pesos for nationals, and 15 pesos if you're over the age of 60 and have a in a pond card and so it's open every day they open from nine to four every day and not only is it a park where you can see cool statues but you can also see museum pieces as well so thank you for watching hasta la vista amigos hasta la vista nos vemos